In today's episode, we're going to be looking at what causes the static pressure drop as air flows through a radiator. G'day, I'm Trav. Welcome back to the Fast and the Nerdy. Pressure drop through a radiator is a good thing. We design our ducting to help encourage it by increasing the static pressure on the inlet side and reducing it on the exit side. We do this to help encourage the airflow through the radiator as well as ensuring it's turbulent, helping to increase the amount of heat transfer. But it's only good up until a point. After which, the speeds that we would need to go or the size of the fan that we would need to use to draw the air through the radiator would be just far too large. So we need to balance these two things. We want a large static pressure drop to increase the mass flow, but we don't want it too large to, to block the air flowing through it. And the pressure loss equation is made up of four things. The pressure loss as the air flows into the heat exchanger, and then as it flows along the heat exchanger, we have uh, friction and momentum losses, and then we have a gain as it exits the heat exchanger. If we go in a little bit deeper, we can see that the, the pressure loss from contraction and the pressure gain from the expansion could almost cancel each other out but as we are introducing heat our density would change as it flows through the through the heat exchanger and we can see that the density at point a contributes to the contraction equation whereas the density at d contributes to the expansion equation the density at point d would be a lot lower than it is at point a as the air is heated up the density decreases and we can see that both of these equations have the mass velocity in them which is just the mass flow rate divided by the area of the core and the area of the core is related to how densely packed the radiator is. So if we were to increase the amount of fins we had and reduce the area of the core by half, we would increase the pressure loss by four times. They also both have a constant, Kc and Ke. And lastly, we have theta, which is just the inlet and exit ratios. The inlet ratio is just the area of the radiator inlet divided by the area of the inlet ducting. And the exit ratio is the area of the exit of the radiator divided by the area of the exit ducting. So again, here we can see that the our choice in radiator, so the density of the radiator has an impact, as well as our ducting design. And we could see the impact of a dirty radiator has on the pressure loss. The next component of the equation is the pressure loss due to friction. Here we have F, which is the friction factor divided by the median density. So that's just the average density across the heat exchanger. And we can see here that the friction factor is uh, the Reynolds number to the power of B times A. A and B are both constants. And then the Reynolds number is just the usual Reynolds number. One interesting thing is that the higher the Reynolds number, the higher the turbulence, the better the heat transfer and larger pressure drop. And lastly, we have the pressure loss due to momentum, which is just the pressure loss due to the heat transfer and as it's related to heat transfer it all centers around the density at point a versus the density at point d so anything we can do to increase the difference between the two will increase our pressure loss so we could thicken up the heat exchanger giving the air more time to heat up so the, the density at row d would decrease or we could remove the ac condenser in front of the radiator or any other heat exchanger that might heat the air up before it enters this heat exchanger and that's it for this video i hope you'd enjoyed it if you did give it a like we also have another video here you can click on to check out the theory of ducting design have a great day